Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric and I like to read, and today I'm going to be doing a summer book haul. So recently we've been able to go back to the bookstores because we have come out of lockdown, which is amazing. And so I'm so excited to share some of the books that we got. I mean, some of them we shopped online as well because we found deals for them, but we also got some of these from the bookstores. So that's the big chain bookstore and also some used bookstores. So I'm just excited to show you guys all the books that I got. And yeah, as I'm going through these, let me know if you've read any of them in the comments down below, because I definitely want to know like which ones to pick up first and which ones to read. So I'll start off with the books that I got at the used bookstore. So the first one is An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, I think is how you say that. And I honestly have no idea what this book is about, but I know it's a thriller and I've seen other people talk about it on their channels and I was like, oh cool, I really want to read this. The funny thing is I bought this book because I saw Greer Hendrix and in my mind I was thinking Grady Hendrix. So I accidentally bought this book because I thought it was Grady Hendrix and I had seen so many other people talk about the other books by Grady Hendrix that are fantastic, like Horror Store or I think it's called the final support group, the final girl support group, something like that. But I found out quickly afterwards that this is Greer Hendrix, not the same person. However, I have seen other people talk about this book and they said it was really good. So I am looking forward to this one still. I'm always down for a new thriller because that has become a genre that I really enjoy because I like puzzling along with the books and trying to figure out what's going to happen. So yeah, I think this one will still be good. And if not, like I can drop it off at the used bookstore again and somebody else can pick it up. Then I found one that I'm super excited about. This was on my wish list. And so when I saw this at the used bookstore, I was pumped. And that was Hench. And this is by Natalie Zena Walshots. I'm going to be getting all these names wrong. I just know it. But anyways, so this one is following the main character who has an encounter with a hero that leaves them like badly injured. And then because of this, they decide to go work for the villain side instead as like their temp or like their office person, office admin, like data person. And yeah, so it's like, it's definitely interesting to see a book where it's like following the henchman's point of view rather than like the hero or the villain. I think it's going to be really fun to follow along with that. And I already know that other people that have read this have really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to be able to talk to them about it after I finish this one. I also really love books that are like themed on heroes or villains. It's just something that like I've grown up loving reading comic books. So I think that this one is going to be a definite hit for me. And the last one that I got at the used bookstore is The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina. Uh, I have heard that Sherry is like a pretty good thriller author and I know that they have a lot of works out there So I wanted to pick up one of their books to see how it is I also picked this up based on Marcus's mom's recommendation because she was here During that weekend when we went to the used bookstore and she saw me looking at this and said she read it and really enjoyed it So I was like, okay, well now I have to read it so that we can talk about it together So I picked this one up now I'm gonna read the synopsis for you guys because I don't even know what it's about so it says, how well do you know the couple next door, or your husband, or even yourself? People are capable of almost anything. A twisty roller coaster ride of lies, betrayal, and the secrets between husbands and wives. How far would you go if pushed past your limit? So that sounds pretty interesting. I feel like it's going to be a very intense domestic thriller, and I'm definitely down for it. Also, these books that I've been showing you guys have deckled edges, so that's really cool because I love that feeling on my fingers when I'm reading. Uh, I, I just feel so fancy when I have a deckled edge book, so yeah. But those are all the books that I got at the used bookstore. Now let's move on to the big chain bookstore, which is Chapters. So I got Permanent Record for $6 because I am a bargain hunter and I always go for like the shelf with all the deals on it. Uh, I picked this one up because it's by Mary H.K. Choi, and I read their other book, oh, what was it called? Um, Emergency Contact, I read by her, and I quite enjoyed that book, so I picked this one up because it was cheap and because it's the same author, so I'm sure I'll probably enjoy this one too. I honestly have no idea what this book is about, and I'm going to leave it at that, going into it, just not knowing, but I'm excited to figure it out, and hopefully I like it. I also got... 
a dad jokes book. And if any of you guys follow me on Twitter, then you will notice that I have been sharing some of these jokes on Twitter because they are cracking me up. I am not a dad, but I love dad jokes. And so I'm going to keep sharing these on Twitter. And if you want to hear some of these jokes, follow me on Twitter and you'll see them. The next two books I actually got on the website Once Upon a Book Club. Um, these were discounted books that were ones that they had in their book boxes, but they're like leftover books that they just had extras of. So they were selling them there. And if you guys want to check out Once Upon a Book Club, I have a discount for it in the description down below. So you can check that out. But anyways, um, these books were well known all over booktube. I have seen them everywhere and they looked good. So the first one I got was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I've heard so many amazing things about this book and I honestly don't even know much about it. I just like, I think the cover's stunning and I think that a lot of people have been raving about it. So I had to get it. I believe I only got it for like eight bucks too, which is really good. So let's read the back together so we can find out what it's about. Between life and death, there is a library. Up until now, Nora Seed's life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she has let everyone down, including herself. But things are about to change. When she finds herself in the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she had done things differently. Each one contains a different life, a possible world in which she made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways, affecting everyone she knew as well as many people she never met. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. But things aren't always what she imagined they'd be, and soon her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. Before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question. What is the best way to live? Wow. Okay, that sounds amazing. I love books that deal with, like, different timelines or, like, alternate realities or things that, like, could have been. So, yeah, like, one of my favorite movies is the butterfly effect and it kind of like deals with the same course sort of thing and so like i think this book's gonna be phenomenal i really want to read this now that sounds so good so yeah this is definitely one that i'm excited to haul and get to eventually probably soon and then the other book that i bought from the once upon a book club website is happily ever afters by elise bryant um this book is about a main character who writes romance and they got accepted into their school for a writing program. So when they start that writing program, they realize that like the words just aren't coming anymore and they are losing inspiration and they don't know what to write. So the main character starts living out a list of things that she would have in a romance novel to give her more inspiration to write more. And so she starts living these romantic encounters, these romantic things on this list and realizes that she's becoming less of herself. And so it's kind of like a book about self-identity and being who you are, but also like a fun rom-com twist on it. So I think that that's gonna be really fun and I'm excited to get to this one in the future. The next two books are books that Marcus hauled, but I will probably end up reading eventually because they sound good. And one of them is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I've seen lots of people talk about this on booktube and say that it's like a really fun thriller. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. So I'm going to read the synopsis because I'm also intrigued and I want to know more about this book. It says, everyone in Fairview knows the story. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend, Sal Singh, who then killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about. And five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. But she can't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. She knew Sal when she was a child and he was always so kind to her. How could he possibly have been the killer? Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project, at first just to cast doubt on the original investigation. But soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent, and the line between past and present begins to blur. Someone in Fairview doesn't want Pip digging around for answers, and now her own life might be in danger. Okay, this sounds like it is going to be a thrill ride. A girl... <laughs> A girl being a detective trying to figure out the case and like all set in high school i'm sure there's gonna be some sassy dramatic events happening in it as well <laughs> and we all know like i'm here for those books so yeah i think this one's gonna be pretty good then marcus also got this beautiful edition of we were liars by e lockhart so i believe this is the uk edition but it's just so pretty like i love 
this like background color with the gold lettering. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So I've heard lots of people talk about this book. I think this is like a more popular book back in like the like 2010s, but I'm still excited to read it even though I'm late to the game. So it says, welcome to the beautiful Sinclair family. No one is a criminal. No one is an addict. No one is a failure. Our upper lips are stiff and it is possible people are curious about us because we do not show them our hearts. So <laughs> seems like a very closed off family and something's gonna happen. That didn't really give me any information, but I'm okay with that because that means going into it, like I'll know less and be surprised by more. So yeah, we have this one now. And then the next three books are books that I have had on my wish list for a while. And so I'm really excited that I finally have them and can put them on the shelves. One is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesar, I think is how you say that. This cover looks so creepy and ominous and like very 80s style, which I adore. And I love how it says at the bottom, the kids are not all right. So I'm really excited to read this one. I'm probably gonna save it for October because it's got like the creepy vibes that I want. So essentially in this book, it's following a, a family that moves to a small town. And I believe the daughter's in high school. And in this small town, it's mainly run based on it's like one factory that it has that kind of like is what runs the city and keeps it going. And the factory ends up burning down due to kids like throwing a party there and having pranks and that like lights the factory on fire. And so all the old people are upset with the younger generation because they kind of burnt down their only thing that like is keeping this town going. A girl also died in this fire. And so all the young generation is kind of blamed for that because they're the ones that had this party where she died. Um, so it's kind of like the young and old folk of this town like fighting and getting on each other's nerves and things like that. But then a homicidal clown shows up and starts just killing everybody. <laughs> and so, yeah, like I, that's, that's all I really know about the book. And that just makes me so pumped. Like clowns are already creepy. So like a murderous clown in a small town is just like top tier scary vibes. And I am so ready to read this. I think I'm going to be like shaking in my boots, but I am ready for it. And I think it's gonna be so much fun. If any of you have read this book, let me know in the comments down below because I just like, I wanna have other people to talk about the creepy vibes like once I'm done. Then we have Faith Taking Flight. And so this book is about a pretty normal girl who she just volunteers at her like veterinary clinic. She is obsessed with a show called The Grove and she just likes to hang out with her friends on the weekends. But then she also discovers that she has the ability to fly. So she notices things start to happen. Animals and people start to go missing. The show, The Grove, starts filming in her hometown. And the main love interest of that show starts to show a love interest for Faith. And so she also kind of discovers that there's this mysterious new like designer drug that's in town and she links it to people going missing. And now Faith has to discover what's happening behind the scenes in order to protect her friends and family. And yeah, it sounds really cool. Like it's a main character with a superpower. So I'm like, yeah, I love it. And yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. I think it's gonna be a fun time and yeah. And then the last one I have is I'll Be The One by Lila Lee. Uh, this is following a girl who has always wanted to be a K-pop star. And so she tries out for this competition and ends up nailing it. So then she gets brought into the world of K-popdom. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm gonna say it's a word. And so now it's her kind of navigating being a K-pop star and dealing with all the fat phobia that is in the K-pop industry. And so it's her kind of just sticking it to the industry and being like, look, this is me and I'm here and I am valid. And so I'm like, I'm really excited to read this. I think it's gonna be a very like eye-opening book and just good. Like, I think it's gonna be one that is going to stick with me. And those are all the books that I've hauled for my summer haul. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books. I definitely wanna get your opinions on them. And let me know what your favorite book is that you also hauled this summer. And now for our independent bookstore shout out. Okay guys, so today's independent bookstore shout out is for Buckingham Palace in Salmon Arm, British Columbia. And so first of all, I just wanna say I love their sign for their store. It's just, I don't know, it 
feels like it's like a castle or something like that. But anyways, the store also looks really nice. Um, so this is their homepage. They have new releases. They also have puzzles. And Marcus and I have been doing a lot of puzzles lately. Oh, actually, he would really like this one. Um, and we also noticed that puzzles with birds are hard to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they have other stuff. So they have stand-up puzzles. They have uh, other reels with more books. Of course, you can go see all the books um, in their store. If you click here. So this shows all the stuff that they have in the store. And then I think there was an option for bargain books, which is what I would go for. Because I always am looking for a bargain. Ooh, some of these actually are really good deals. But yeah. There's, there's lots of options here. I also just saw, what is this? What is Folks Manus Puppets? Oh my goodness, you can get different puppets? That's really cool too. <laughs> A hermit crab puppet. Anyways, so this is their website. Um, if you want to check it out, you can order online, but it's at bookingham.com. If you guys want to support me, I have a Patreon and a coffee page, which I'll put in the description down below, as well as a link to buy my bookmarks. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button so you get notified when I post new videos. I post my videos on Mondays and Thursdays. And until next time, keep on reading.